unfortunately, it was a very gruesome uh, discovery. Jess's body came to the surface, and of course, she's been in the water all. So the, time. the final episode opens with uh, sort of a uh, Emma is kind of still disoriented. And so there is this scene of her with Parker and he's, you know, holding her and they're dancing and he's kind of like spinning her in a circle. And then she kind of comes to her senses slightly and you realize that it's actually John that has her all taped and tied up and bound and he's actually holding her, spinning her and then she, you know, snaps out of it and then she's trying to fight back. Um, he then, uh, you know, he's telling her that, you know, she needs to calm down and how all he wants to do is answer a couple of questions. And then he admits that his boss, you know, needs some answers. And so, of course, she, she was like, your boss, who are you? And like, why are you here? My boss has a lot of questions for you. <laughs> your boss. Here. And so there was this brief flash of Mary driving through town. You obviously know that she's on her way to Emma's house. Um, and then he started asking her questions about Mary's daughter and um, she's telling him that she uh, didn't, doesn't, didn't have anything to do with that, um, that she didn't take, she never took anyone, that the only thing she's guilty of is loving Parker, that's all she did. I loved Ken. I loved him. That's all I did. And how um, Mary has misled him and... Um, it was actually her daughter uh, that was the monster, and then he kind of snapped on her. I never took her daughter. No, shut I up. didn't help him. I didn't shut know. Shut up! Didn't do and he ends up telling her that you know if I let you go, then you're going to call the police, and you know you already know what you know what I look like, and. Um, she's telling him that no, she's not going to call the police, and then he's asking her to promise, and she did, and then but of course he didn't believe her, and he and, and he and, and he ended up kicking her in the head, knocking her out. Don't lie to me. So Mary makes it to Emma's house, and it's completely dark at this point. He has moved her body to the bedroom, and he's kind of creeping around because he he really, he, uh, he know that she's there. So she's kind of walking, wandering around this dark house. She could see that there's like broken stuff, like there was a scuffle. And she saw Emma tied up, all taped up on the bed. And so she actually went in to help her. And she's trying to tell her that he's still, he's there. And Mary was like, well, no, nobody's here. And she then she heard a noise. And then Emma reiterated, he's still here. No, no one's here. It's just me. He's here. But at this point, she had already taken the, you know, the tape off her mouth, obviously, and, you know, she's loosened some of the restraints. So after hearing the noise, Mary, of course, went to investigate, and John ended up knocking her down, and now there's this tussle going on. Um, there's this flash to Emma. She's now trying to undo the rest of the restraints so she can go and help Mary, which she does, and... Um, at this point, by the time she comes out of, out of the room, uh, John is on top of Mary strangling her. And so uh, Emma jumps on him. Instead of picking something up and knocking him out, her first instinct was to jump on his back. And so now there's this whole tussle with her and John. They both end up falling down and she picks something up and basically... I um, started hitting him in the head. Um, eventually, Mary came over to grab her, and I, I guess to kind of like snap, shake her, snap, you know, out of it, because she was kind of in this kind of days where she's like still hitting him, and she's kind of, I guess, she's trying to say that he's down, you know, it's it's fine. Um, so the following morning, they are, uh, trying to do something with, you know, move his body. And this is when the conversation happens. She now has her, the gun on Emma and she says to Emma, you know, I need to know if you, you know, she asked her if she took, 
uh, Teresa and how she needs to know and how she can't go on any further without knowing. Did you take her? <laughs> My daughter. Because I can't go on without knowing. And Emma ended up telling her some hard truths. You know, she told her that um, that uh, you can love somebody and love them. I mean, you can love somebody and not really know them. And Mary ends up saying, well, or you could love them and love what they do. And Emma says to her, I'm talking about you. She's like, what? Excuse me, what are you talking about? She said, you love Teresa, but you didn't know her. You love your daughter. You don't know anything about her. And she told her that all of this pain and all of this evil that you've laid at my feet, it was all, all of this was at the hands of Teresa. And of course, she didn't want to believe that. And then she told her she took her back to that photograph when she came to see her in prison in the first episode. Um, the convenience store. She was telling her that uh, Teresa and Kit knew each other. And they knew each other before she even knew uh, Parker. And of course she didn't want to believe that either. And she's saying that that photograph of them in that convenience store was them falling in love. Your picture, the gas station in Nevada, that was them falling in love. And that's what set her off and she ends up shooting the gun in the ceiling and you know this whole do you think that my daughter would have left and not, con not uh, contacted me and no bank you know no uh, bank activity and no like basically she would just fall off the face of the earth and not contact me and that's not who my daughter was and Emma had to tell her that's who she became. You think my daughter just fell in love and ran away and didn't bother to call me? And you can kind of see in her face, I mean, obviously she didn't shoot Emma, that she could, she, it's hard for her to hear, but there's some truth in what she, what Emma is saying. So Emma, uh, so at this point, uh, Mary is outside and she's kind of mulling over everything that's, everything that was said. And Emma came out to, to continue the conversation and... You know, she started, you know, telling her that basically how her daughter was a murderer. And um, basically, if your daughter is out there, God help anybody that comes across her. And she was like, don't say that. Don't you dare say that. If your daughter is still out there, Mary, God help anyone who comes across her. Don't say that. Don't you say that. Your daughter, she's the monster. And she, you know, started talking to her about swimming and how... Um, she wanted to quit, but because you wanted to be in the booster get a club and this whole thing and, you know, how, you know, you made her, you know, continue swimming. And then, of course, Mary was like, well, no, she, I, I wanted her to do it, but it was for her. She wanted to do it. And then uh, Emma ends up dropping another bomb on her saying that she was 13 when it started. She was 13 when it started. And Mary is was like, well, actually she was eight years old when she started swimming. Like, you don't even have your facts straight. And Emma tells her, no, I'm not talking about swimming. And you kind of see Mary's face change. I'm not talking about swimming. And she said that, um, basically that's why she wanted to quit swimming, but you kept forcing her to go back and she ended up, had, you know, she kept going back to him. And basically saying that that's why her daughter, you know, probably one of the reasons why her daughter turned into the monster that she is. And then she was like, well, go ask honey. And when she said that, you could see Mary's like it all, you know, stuff started to make sense to her. And as you can see in this photograph behind me is when she said, mentioned honey, um, she's like, she gave everything to someone named honey. Go ask. Ask honey. She said she left everything with someone named Honey. And you know, Emma was saying that she never told me who that was, but you could tell by Mary's facial expression that she knows exactly who that is. And that, you know, she ended up telling her that her daughter ruined like your daughter ruined my life. And as they parted ways, she basically, you know, begged her to tell the truth. 
Like, you know, she's tired of being in hiding. She's tired of being vilified. She's tired for things that she did not do. Um, and she just wanted her to tell the truth. Tell the truth, Mary. Tell the truth. So shortly after Emma and Mary parted ways, they it was a brief scene, a flash to the swamp. And unfortunately... It was a very gruesome uh, discovery. Jess's body came to the surface. And of course, she's been in the water all this time. So she's all bloated. And it was just, I could have done without seeing that. But Jess's body has surfaced. So Mary's back at home. And we find out that Honey is the family pet that's buried in the yard. And so Mary dug up the, the grave and found a box. And, in, in, and inside the box, she found letters from Kit. If you ever feel down, just think about how much better you feel in a few months. When you leave it all behind, I hope love is treating you better. With love, you Kit. So this obviously confirmed what Emma was saying was true, that Kit and uh, Teresa has had a longstanding um, relationship. So Emma is now going through John's briefcase. She found uh, the keys to his hotel room. So she went to the hotel and she found Tom. Tom. Okay. Okay. So luckily Tom is still alive and for whatever reason he has them sitting in bath water, I guess just to further torture him. But he's um, still alive, thank God. So this festival they've been talking about is, um, is going on the same night and there's fireworks and the whole thing going on. The Lords make their entrance. So of course people are all clapping and they're all <coughs> in good cheer and the whole thing. And so he starts explaining, you know, the festival and how long it's gone on, a hundred years. And uh, he gave the torch to uh, Rose to light. Uh, the saints. And so as this was going on and people were cheering, this man from nowhere uh, came walking through the crowd with just bloated body and laid it at the feet of the Lord. And he basically pointed to Bodhi and said, you're responsible for this. And then, as you know, this guy was gone. Now there's pandemonium. The crowd is running everywhere. You see Rose uh, kind of moving away from her dad. And she runs off. You kind of see him backing away. Like he's just kind of looking um, looking around, seeing what's going on. But, yeah, it's crazy now. People are just running. Because you can just imagine just the sight of it and the smell, I guess, would be unbearable. So in a previous scene, Mary uh, called Jake and told her, told him that she, you know, wanted to move forward with having the memorial at the, um, at the organization because initially they were talking about doing that and then they decided to do their own private thing. So now she's decided that she wants to do this and she wanted him to be there. And so she's now giving a press conference, um, and talking about her ordeal. And of course now she has to explain why she's all fucked up because she is, Got scraped all in the forehead. She's black and blue. Her face, she got a black eye. She looked like she'd have been through it, right? And so you, she stand there and you're like, okay, she's going to cut, you know, she's finally come to terms with, you know, what was, what's happened and she's going to do the right thing. Well, no, she basically said that t Karen attacked her. Karen Miller brutally attacked me. And that, uh, Karen confessed to the murders and how she was complicit in the murders with Parker. After confessing to the killing of Amy Walker and many, many others. And how she's an evil person and how she is living under the name of um, Emma Hall and St. Uh, where is she? St. Peter's, Louisiana. So she gave them her, her uh, identity and everything. Is dangerous and violent and living in the town of St. James, Louisiana. And how she demands justice. So even though she got all this proof, she 
I mean, I don't know. Did she, did, is Teresa, did Teresa get it from her mama? I, you know, they both crazy. They both crazy. So we flash to uh, Emma. Tom and Emma are now in his cruiser, and you kind of see his face. He's kind of he he is beat up, and you can kind of see teeth marks in his face where uh, John bit him in his face. I'm like, Lord, this man is. It, it, we already knew he was an animal, but and so Emma and Tom are watching the press conference. Parker, she was willing and active. Karen Miller is dangerous, and of course, this sets Emma off. She's saying that, oh, you know, she's lying and now she's going to have to go. And now I have to go. Oh, God. Oh, God. She's lying. I will prove it. You know, Tom is trying to, you know, convince her that he could protect her. And she just like, she's going to she's going to have to move again. She, she doesn't have a choice. So Rose found herself in the House of Mirrors because the way the festival was, it was like this kind of fair. And so she's now in the House of Mirrors. She's off to herself and she makes a an announcement. She uh, she called Emma and of course Emma preoccupied, didn't answer the phone. And she left a message saying that she didn't mean to hurt Jess, but she just wanted Jess to stop talking, you know, telling all these, saying these horrible things about her dad. Jess, she's all wet and she's bloated from the swamp and I didn't want to hurt her. I just wanted to shut her up and make her stop talking about my dad. So I don't know if she's saying that she was responsible for killing Jess or she's apologizing for how she attacked her in the bathroom. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I get that she's saying that she she's apologizing for killing Jess. And so, next thing you know, her father walks in. He took the phone from her. And he told her that she doesn't have to speak to her. And that he's going to make everything go away. And she has this conversation with her dad about how she was saying these horrible things and, you know, how she did it for, you know, to protect him. And he was saying how he understands. And, again, another family of lunatics. So, um, and how um, he's, you know, going to fix everything and how uh, everything that just said were lies. And so she believed her father for a minute. And then Diane came and her mom and she basically said that... Um, God forgive you for the, the evil that you've done. Something to that effect. God forgive you for what you've done. And so she ended up pulling Rose away from him. And saying that he's not fit to be a parent. And she, I, by that interaction, she went looked at her dad. And she said, you told me that everything was, uh, that, uh, was said were lies. You said they were all lies. And by his facial expression, like his eyes all bugged out and he looked like, like his whole world is crumbling. Like this facade of him being this guy, the, you know, that guy, this family man, this great guy, this, you know, church going, you know, guy, upstanding uh, member of society is crumbling before his eyes. And she, the daughter walked off and eventually, you know, his wife walked off as well. So Rose makes it, uh, so Rose, Mary makes it home after the, um, uh, after the press conference and Jake and Saul were noticeably absent. And so she makes it home and remember Saul was living in the trailer. He was on the property in the backyard, but when she came home, Saul was gone. Oh, Saul. And so she went into the house and she realized that both Jake and Saul are, are know what she's been up to. Every receipt, I mean, stacks and stacks of papers, they have it all laid out, all neatly laid out on the dining room table as she walked in. And he even had the card that uh, when John initially sent her flowers, I forget which episode it was, and she pulled the card out and ripped the card in half and tossed it in the trash, she, he even had that on the table. He had taped it together and there was a sign on the table that said, you're the monster. So Saul and Jake are in the wind. They, they are wherever they are. They just, I mean, at this point, they just don't want to be near her because they they know what she's up to. And so now she is, she lost her, uh, I, like I said, I don't know if they were fully divorced or if there was ever... It didn't seem like they were going to reconcile, but she lost Jake at this point. 
So back we go back to the the fair. Bodie's coming out of the uh, mirror fun house, mirror place, whatever, and he's talking to somebody on the phone saying that you said that you took care of it and that the body would never uh, resurface. And now the body has come back, and now I'm gonna have to pay your girl a visit. You swore her body would never come back, but here she is, back up for all to see. And you're like, who is he talking to? And then we flash to he's talking to Pete, and Pete is like, what do you mean, my girl? She's gonna take the fall. How you mess this up? What do you mean, my girl? Um, he's saying that your uh, girl's a child killer, and how I'm gonna have to go, and now I'm gonna have to deal with this. And Peter's saying you need to stay away from her, and haven't I done everything that you've always asked me to do? And I want out. And Bodie Bates told him that you're not out, and neither is she. So we go to Emma's house, and Bodie goes in. And he can see the trail of blood where they dragged um, John's body to the. Uh, to the um, pantry. I'm assuming that's what that was supposed to be. Carol. And he's saying, uh, so Bodie knocks on, he uh, grabs the door and he's about to open the door and saying, come to Jesus. And then you, he opened the door and John's body is gone. And then you hear John say, no, you come to Jesus. He whips around and John is standing there like he even rose from the dead. Look, oh my God, he looks terrible. No, you come to Jesus, baby. But you can imagine that that's not what uh, Bodie expected to see. And so you face to face with somebody who is just as evil as you. And so we go to uh, the Barlow's house. The coach is down there because remember, there's two photographs there. There was a photograph that Jake found in the photo album with the coach's eyes scratched out. And when Mary uh, dug up the box, there was another photo, the same photo of the swim team with the coach's eyes scratched out. And so, um, and then of course, the conversation she had with Emma. And the coach came over and she was, and he, she was like, I didn't think that you'd want, you know, want to talk to me. And he was saying that. I'm, I only said that in terms of the team. I didn't, you know, mean, I, I didn't mean any offense to you as far as, you know, individually like you as a person. And so she told him that, you know, she wanted him to see there's this journal that Teresa uh, kept. And so she invited him, uh, she invited him in. And next, you know, you hear a gunshot. So we're assuming that she didn't kill the coach. It's a journal of my daughter's. Okay. Okay, so we finally uh, see where Emma actually went. She left Louisiana, went to Minnesota because she wanted to get Freya and just get on. I'm down the road. And so the adoptive mother is standing at the door confused. She's like, okay, wait a minute. She said that you would do this. Um, She's like, who, Esther? She said, no, um, Freya's birth mother, Karen. Uh, she warned me about this. She said you'd come. And you say this. So who said that? Esther? No. I'm talking about Freya's birth mother. And of course she's saying, wait a minute, I'm Karen. She and she's saying, no, Karen has been coming to see coming to see her ever since she was ever since she was young. And of course, Karen, uh Karen, so okay, Emma is saying they're confused, like, what are you talking about? I'm Karen. And so she showed her a photograph, and then um we flash to Teresa, who now has brought red hair. Uh, I guess I know she's a brunette now, and she has uh, Freya, uh, Freya in the in the passenger seat next to her, and she's saying that uh, did I ever tell you how much you look like your dad? Did I ever tell you you look just like your daddy? You say that every time. So now we know that Teresa is still very much alive, and she now has. Parker and Karen's daughter and there's a dead body in the back of the car so she hasn't stopped with her her, her her shenanigans so that's how this episode ends I don't know if I'm up for a sec I mean I, when I sit through another season I don't know I mean this season it's been a lot of highs and lows it's been pretty good so let's see how I feel once the season two rolls around. And the reason I'm saying that is because I get into some of these series and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait for the second season to come. And then they cancel the show. So we'll see what happens in the future. I'm going to end this here and I will talk to you guys later.